mute yourself. You'll be muted for the rest of the session, but if you have a question, please feel free to utilize the chat feature found on the bottom of your screen. While we're all not together in a physical space, we'd like to acknowledge that we're all on First Nation lands. Inca staff would like to recognize that we live on wor and work on the ancestral grounds of the Haudenosaunee people. If you'd like to add your pronouns to your name, please go ahead and select more and rename, and you can add those right there. Danny. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for letting us be a part of your journey to business ownership. And for those of you who have come to more than one session this week, thank you for making it to Friday night uh, during this big conference. We know it's a lot of information being thrown at you and we just appreciate you sticking along for the ride. Um, I'm Danny Delaney. I'm the Business and Transition Program Coordinator here at ANCA. And I'd like to particularly thank Community Bank, uh, who's our lead sponsor for this whole event, um, Glens Falls National Bank and Trust Company also sponsoring this event. And of course, our friends, the SUNY Canton SBDC at Clinton Community College, with, for whom without them, uh, we would not be having this wonderful conference with such great content um, and ideas being shared and opportunities uh, being shared as well. So thank you so much to all of all of those folks who have made this happen, as well as the Northern Border Regional Commission who helps to finance, or sorry, helps to finance the Center for Businesses and Transition Program overall. Why are we doing this? Uh, thousands of Adirondack North Country businesses are becoming available as business owners prepare for retirement or career changes and aspiring entrepreneurs like you are seeking opportunities to own a business. Here we are. Uh, this particular program that we're talking about tonight is a little bit more sort of nitty gritty talking about how to get financing, like what, where do you start? Where does it come from? That kind of thing. Um, this event, the whole conference is designed to be a learning and networking opportunity for aspiring entrepreneurs and an opportunity to empower those who live here and those who want to live here to realize their dreams of business ownership. Typically, I would take some time to talk to you all about the Center for Businesses and Transition, but I think if you've been here, you've heard that. Also, you can reach out to me um, or, you know, you'll see your emails about uh, all about what we do and, and who we are. Um, at this time, we ask all of the Center for Businesses and Transition liaisons or lead partners to please put your name and contact information in the chat. If you have questions about the center, if you have questions about transitioning your business, um, these are great people to reach out to. Um, please feel free to reach out to them. They not only want to talk to you, but want to help. You. Um, so ANCA, Adirondack North Country Association, same thing. We do lots of great things in the region. Please reach out to us if you have more questions um, and if you have uh, want to know more about our work building a new economy that works for all throughout the North Country. Um, I'd like to get us started by thanking sort of my co-host for this evening. Hi, Steve. How are you this evening? You're on mute. <laughs> Who was it the other day was saying, I need a t-shirt that just says, you're on mute. <laughs> I'm doing very well, thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Steve works for the AEDC, the Adirondack Economic Development Corporation, and he is a small business support specialist. He's been doing this for just, just a couple years. He's been at the AEDC since 2012 and has been working in commercial lending and supporting small businesses for over 20 years. He's a fierce advocate for the North Country. He lives right here, we're in the same county as I do in Franklin County, uh, up near the Malone area. And he's a graduate of two of our colleges right here in the area, North Country Community College and Clarkson University. Um, Steve is gonna be helping with the Q&A portion later, talking about his work in a little bit as well. Uh, Steve, is there anything you wanna to add to, to tell people about yourself? Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, the tonight's session. Um, you know, ADC, we're uh, very open to answer questions at any point in time. I believe I just put my contact information in the chat box. So uh, I'm really looking to help out in any way I can in my capacity as a, as a facilitator here with the CBIT program. Thanks so much, Steve. We're so excited to have you and to hear more from you a little bit later this afternoon evening, afternoon, I don't know what time it is. Um, but thank you so much for being here and, uh, and taking on that role, we appreciate it. Um, and if we're talking about financing, um, I, don't think, I don't think we should skip over that we are sort of announcing the down payment assistance fund uh, for folks who are trying to take over an existing business. Um, if you would like to contribute or are interested in applying, um, if you are low to moderate income or a black indigenous or person of color um, who would like to take over an existing business but need some help getting that down payment, uh, please do not, do not hesitate to reach out to us. 
love to hear from you um, and talk about that opportunity more. Now I'm going to sort of turn it over to Angela Smith. You may have heard from her a few other times this week as well. She's been a huge uh, proponent of this conference and such a huge help in, help in making this happen. Um, Angela works at the SUNY Canton Small Business Development Center. She helps business owners every single day with their business plans. Uh, she has been helping people get through the pandemic, which has been a huge heavy lift. Um, she is a strategic business leader, hospitality executive, she meditates, she's beautiful, she's smart. Uh, she's a person that I also uh, you know, like to call friends. So I'm so glad to have you here today, Angela. And um, thank you so much for sort of taking on the interview role with our, our guest, Peter Pappas. And I'll hand the mic over to you. Thank you so much, Danny. Well, yes, you can absolutely call me your friend. And I'd say the same thing about you. And you've said such nice things about all of us throughout the conference, but I wanna say a big thank you to you specifically for organizing this. Um, it's been a great week and I'm looking forward to, our, to tomorrow's brunch. Um, and welcome everyone. So I'm super excited for this session because with me today is my friend and mentor, Mr. Peter Papas. Peter's a retired regional SBDC director. He used to work at the University of Connecticut. And I actually met him about six or seven years ago during our annual SBDC conference, um, where he was actually presenting on the topic of small business valuation. Um, he's a seasoned entrepreneur. He's owned several restaurants all at once, Ooh, scary, and as well as some commercial properties. He's managed closely held businesses sales um, and transactions. So he's helped many, many business owners transition their businesses up to $20 million in value. And he's now an independent consultant on the business purchase sale and focusing on exit strategy and execution. Peter's been a great friend to the North Country and he's traveled here twice to assist from uh, Arizona uh, to assist with business valuation seminars and client advisement sessions with the SBDC. He continues to be available to our office and our advisors when we have unique cases and need his expertise. He does this pro bono because he loves working with entrepreneurs and with me. Right, Peter? That's right. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. And um, so we're here today to talk about financing the purchase of an existing business, and we only have 15 minutes to do it. So here we go. Question one. You have a great deal of knowledge and experience in facilitating ownership and transition of businesses. How would you initially advise someone who's considering the purchase of a business? All right, I'm gonna address this to the potential buyers out there. And when I say you, I'm talking to them. Expect an incre incremental process where you will get information uh, over time. Initially, I advise my sellers not to disclose a great deal of detail, but uh, gross sales, gross profit, a little bit of the history, the type of business. Uh, as they say in the Navy, it's not classified, it's need to know, and a buyer doesn't need to know until he establishes himself as a serious buyer. I'll tell you how you do that. There are two things to evaluate in the in the consideration of purchasing a business. Of course, there's the financial feasibility. Is it gonna support you and your family? Is it going to be bankable? And we're gonna talk a lot about financing. More important is you. Is this business right for you? Right for you and your family? Is this life that will unfold in the future something that you want? And you have to look at that fuzzy future. It's, it's a little unclear and decide if that's your life that you want. Uh, you, can, you should go and meet the owner of the business and that also establishes you as a serious buyer and you get more and more information. Uh, you should examine your capability to run that business where it is, as it is, because I advise my buying clients not to plan on wholesale changes right away because that business has a market. That market is there because they like what's going on. You don't want to lose them by uh, ambushing them with a lot of change initially. Get to know them. Uh, you can go, if you're 
50, 60, 70 miles away from the Adirondack region, looking at a business up here. Uh, you can go to your local chamber, find a similar business and uh, ask them, who could I talk to about uh, the, the B and B or the florist business? And they'll send you to somebody who's willing to talk because you're not a competitor, you're too far away. Hi, I'm think I like this business and I'm thinking of, of buying one in the Adirondack regions. What can you tell me about this life? Uh, learn as much as you can. And then uh, there's the financial feasibility. Will it support you? and your family, and you must bring your family into this consideration early on. Don't ambush them just before the closing because uh, an unhappy family member uh, is going to make this a miserable life for you. Uh, you will get some financial information immediately and you'll get more and more details, uh, tax returns and so forth. Do not get obsessed because it looks good in the beginning and you initially decide, yes, I wanna go ahead. If something comes up that shows it's not feasible, let it go. Don't be like the prisoners of war who built the bridge over the river Kwai and got so obsessed with building a great bridge that they defended against, they defended that bridge against their own side. So be prepared to change your mind. And along the way, the financial feasibility has to work for you. And I don't think you have enough money to buy this business. I don't, nobody does. Nobody has a lot of cash sitting around. You're gonna to have to finance it. How are you gonna put the deal together? And that's what this presentation, that's what I'm getting to. This whole presentation is supposed to be about how do you finance the purchase of a business? And we'll talk more about how you put together uh, financing. Angela. So that leads me to the next question is, how do people prepare, right? You found the business that you want to buy. You've crunched the numbers, the numbers work. Now you're ready uh, to put some of your money down, but there's a gap, right? We need a lender. What does someone need to do before they approach a bank? You will have a great advantage buying an existing business because you have history. Uh, I work, we, and Angela works with a lot of startups, people who are, are starting a new business and all of their financial projections are prophecy. You have history. Now you could take that and take it to the bank and say, this is what this business did in the last three years. And this is what I think it will do under my management. Don't depart from history without good reason. You could, you could say, well, I'm gonna add a new machine that's gonna increase the, the capacity of this pest management company and increase staff because the market will support it and sales will go up 25%. Now, not immediately, but in a reasonable amount of time. Now, if you have that justification, you can say your business will do better than historical, but Absent of that, stick with history. And I would say, find out who, which bank that business is doing business with. They know that business. That business is a customer. They don't want to lose that customer. If you approach that, that particular bank, you are keeping that bank's customer and uh, they have a relationship. So that's my first advice about where to go for lending. If you have back where you live, a great relationship with a commercial lender, fine. But uh, ask, when you are working with a seller, you wanna know who the seller is dealing with, their bank, their accountant. Uh, very important that you get access to the accountant so he can explain how things were developed, how these tax returns came about. And, the banker, they want to keep that customer. Angela. Is it true that most lenders will require a business plan and financial projections as part as the loan application? So people would be well advised to work on those items before approaching the lender? Yes. Uh, 
and again, buying an existing business is a much easier. When you're creating a business, uh, your business plan has to explain an awful lot. Uh, your business plan uh, is mostly uh, about the particular business you're buying and what its strengths are and how you intend and how you qualify to operate it. And, and I told you a, a while ago, it's very important that you establish that you can operate this business to yourself and then you can establish it to a lender. Okay. So when people are looking at financial options, right? So in a general sense, what's kind of the order in which you would go about looking to secure financing? So I would think first and foremost, you, the buyer, have to have some cash to put down because nobody's going to finance 100% of the business, right? That's right. Uh, if there's real estate involved, you may be able to uh, finance up to 90%, but the rule of thumb is you need to have 20% down. Uh, where you get that, well, you can. if you have the money, great. If you don't, the traditional financing methods for entrepreneurs are the F-cubed source, friends, family, and fools. You, you can have to gather enough to get that 20% from people who believe in you. Uh, I caution you about getting investors. Investors own a piece of the action. And once you bring them aboard, you may never get rid of them. If you pay off the bank, they're out of your life. So in terms of the order of operations uh, in financing, you can pay a social call to the banker. You wanna know who the loan officer is, who knows the business, who you'll be dealing with. That's it for them. Uh, don't bore them with a lot of things because you don't have it together. Then you put together a loan package, which includes that plan, description of the business, the historical financials, your financial projections, and your qualifications. Speaking of qualifications, if you don't have good credit, you're not gonna be very attractive to the bankers. And I tell clients who don't have good credit, don't go to a credit correction place, do it yourself, get your credit report, find out what's on it and, and investigate and protest anything you think is unfair. A, a creditor has 30 days to respond. Did you hear that? If they don't respond in 30 days, it's off your credit report. To get good credit, all you have to do is pay what you agreed to pay on time. On time is very important. A late payment is worse than a non-payment. Mm. A non-payment could be accidental. A late payment is a deliberate violation. So we got our two minute warning. So just uh -oh. summarize. Yep, we got one question to know. We're okay. So bank first, bank may do a portion <coughs> all or none. Right. And if there's a gap in funds, so you put down money, the bank or credit union may want to do a portion of the project. But we also have economic development agencies and gap lenders in our region here that will often um, be able to look at potentially funding the gap of the project. And uh, Steve Garneau is following us uh, with the next kind of uh, discussion. So he's going to tell us all about gap lending because that's the world he lives in. So the last question for us, Peter, and I think we'll probably have about a minute to answer is what are most common financing pitfalls or issues that folks face when they look to secure a loan for the bank or credit union? I think you talk about poor credit. That's absolutely something that'll come up. No. Well, I think, I think working with the banker, once you Business relationships are also personal relationships. Once you identify the lending officer, uh, communicate with the lending officer. Don't be a nag, but certainly follow up. If you don't hear from them three days after you put in your application, you're certainly uh, justified in saying, is there anything else you need? But you don't call and say, well, what's the deal here? Uh, Angela brought up an important point. There are 
lenders that are motivated not just by profit, but by regional economic development. I was on a loan committee in Connecticut for one of them. And we did loans that weren't bankable because they were good for economic development, jobs and taxes in our region. And we had a fund that was contributed, ironically, by banks to do loans that they couldn't do. That's how so, they could do the real estate portion, but not the rest. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and you have such great resources in the Adirondack region. It's always a pleasure for me to work with my colleagues up there. Uh, like Angela and Danny and, and others uh, and their crews, uh, they're gonna take care of you and they want to make you successful. And these are free services uh, by experienced professionals. The SBDC and ANCA are just priceless. And, and I'm sure that the Adirondack region will flourish uh, under their stewardship. Thank you, Peter. We're wrapping it up. So Danny, I'm gonna throw it back to you and or Steve. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you so much, guys. That was very, very insightful. And uh, we're excited to, to learn more about some of those services that were, were talked about um, that are here, right here in the North Country. Um, so Steve, tell us about the AEDC. What is it that you do? To, and uh, what is gap lending? Tell us all about it. All right, great. Well, let me tell you a little bit about uh, our organization. Uh, ADC is a sort of federally certified as a community development financial institution, meaning uh, we focus service on economically and socially disadvantaged clients, including minority and women owned business or business entrepreneurs. Um, we provide access to capital, technical assistance and business counseling to small businesses. Um, we're a U.S. Small Business Administration micro lender and a New York State Entrepreneurship Assistance Center. We also offer adult financial literacy training and minority and women-owned business enterprise certification through New York State. Um, we're a relatively small organization. We're a team of five. Uh, we're based here in Saranac Lake, and our mission is to advance economic opportunity in the communities we serve, providing support for new and existing businesses. The organization serves a footprint identical to ANCAS, that is um, Northern New York, encompassing Clinton, Essex, Franklin, Fulton, Hamilton, Herkimer, Jefferson, Lewis, Oneida, Oswego, Saratoga, St. Lawrence, Washington, and Warren counties. So it's a huge area. Uh, it, it's probably the equivalent of like seven, seven different states in, in mm -hmm. the United States. So we have a great big footprint, but fortunately for Zoom, we're able to reach those folks. Um, a little bit about gap lending. Um, in, in, in our quest to enable individuals to purchase a business or expand, we always encourage them to go to a conventional lender first, that is a, a commercial bank. Uh, more often than not, a commercial bank will provide more favorable financing in terms than an organization like ours. Um, and that being, we have a high concentration of very high risk loans we finance those kinds of projects that tend to scare away a conventional lender. Uh, so that's what gap lending is. Uh, for instance, uh, Mr. Pappas indicated that uh, there's a, a, a certain requirement from banks that they would uh, you know, finance only a portion of a project. Uh, now that project could have a lot of uh, qualifying factors such as the value of what is being purchased and it largely depends on what their own underwriting guidelines are. Um, if there is not enough money in the pocket of the borrower and not enough to make a full purchase, that's the gap and that's where AEDC could fill in to fill in that project to make it possible. Uh, we work very well with lots of other non-conventional lenders in the area. Um, and, and I will say that there is an abundance of capital to finance worthwhile projects that preserve jobs uh, and help stabilize our local economies. Um, you know, for those individuals that are qualified to operate a business and they have uh, fair to good credit, uh, it's very likely that they could pull off uh, a financing of a job that will uh, benefit our communities. Uh, Steve, that's, that's 
really interesting stuff. Thank you so much for sharing with us a little bit about, about what you do. And I'm impressed you listed off the 14 counties. I always just stick them in the chat. <laughs> 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 so somebody comes into your office, you know, and they say, you know, I want to take over this business. What happens? Like, what does that process look like for someone coming in? You know, it really does depend on uh, where they are in the process. Um, uh, typically, we, we ask lots and lots of questions who they are, what their experience is, um, you know, have they done this work before? Um, why did they want to operate this business? And then we'll want to know what this business is and, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Um, I, I tend to ask more questions than probably anyone. <laughs> um, we, and we do finance a lot of different types of businesses. Um, you know, there are a few types of businesses that um, we do tend to shy away from. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we can't uh, finance highly speculative uh, or investment types businesses. Uh, obviously, we can't finance illegal operations and things like that. Um, and because we're a federally backed financial entity, um, we do have to comply with those regulatory requirements of what the government considers uh, you know, acceptable businesses. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, it, does, it, does it make a difference to you when someone comes in, you know, that is trying to take over an existing business, right? Like that's the least amount of speculation, right? They already know what's happened before. They can bring in those books. Like, does it make a difference to you when someone's coming to take over an existing business versus um, starting something from scratch? Is it different? Is the process absolutely. different? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it, when, when you're starting a, a new business from scratch, uh, as Mr. Pappas alluded to, uh, you know, we're, we're really looking at, uh, you know, through a crystal ball to try to forecast what the future is going to be. Um, I'm not really very good at that. Um, but an existing business does have a history. They have a track record. They have established uh, um, assets. They, they have established customer base. So there, there's many, many advantages to financing an existing business uh, versus starting one from scratch. So we have some questions in the chat, and I think I'm just going to throw them at you. Is that okay if we start doing some yeah, of those too? Um, so what if the business has poor financial history that somebody is trying to take over, probably due to neglect, or maybe somebody is getting older and has had some medical issues? We see that a lot with retiring business owners. How, do you look at that differently than a business that has great financials over the last five years? Sure, sure. A business, a business that has less than stellar financials uh, does have is faced with certain challenges. Um, you know, we would look at that to try to determine why that business is not performing as well as it should. And there's lots of legitimate reasons why. Uh, it could be the, that the existing owners um, just don't have the health and well-being to maintain the business as it should. Or it could be something a little bit different. You know, maybe there's some changing uh, trends in the market, uh, you, you know, um, a declining market share. There could be additional competition. Um, but, you know, when it comes back to the buyer of that business, we're, we're going to make that clear that of what we see and the risks and ask that particular buyer, what is their plan to turn this business around? Yeah. Oh, th and I, is that, do you find that that's sort of reassuring for folks taking over an existing business to think like if, if they can sort of think about what the next three, five years of that business looks like, it's not a, it's not a non-starter, right? If the, if the financials are bad. It's, it's not a non-starter. And as an organization, we're always looking for a way to say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that can take, uh, you know, there's a business plan. Uh, there may be some additional uh, technical assistance that me needs to be provided. Uh, we may need to put that person in touch with another organization that maybe has some technical skill in, a, in that specific industry. Uh, but there's a lot of ways that that could be resolved. That's great. So do people usually go to you first or do they go to the bank first? Well, I, I don't know what usual is usual. Uh, we, get, we, <laughs> get, we get folks from uh, referrals from lots of different places. We have great relationships with all of our uh, local banks that we work with um, because we help them make, make, uh, make jobs happen, make deals happen. Uh, so we get lots of referrals from lots of different 
uh, sources. And many of those referrals understand what we do. So um, I, I think, I think uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of ways that we can make things happen. And that's especially great with your new sort of financial empowerment and, and programs too, right? If somebody's coming to you at the very, very beginning, you have resources to help them get their credit up there that are free or low cost and then learn through your entrepreneurship program or connecting with the SPDC, um, kind of wherever they are in, in, on that road, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we, um, we refer uh, lots of folks to the SBDC. They have uh, a wealth of resources, all of which are free. Uh, AEDC does provide a business plan uh, and technical assistance and trusted guidance as well. Uh, but wherever folks can find the resources that they need, that's where we send them. And we are, questions are coming in hot. This is great. Okay. What would you expect a potential borrower to bring with them or have prepared in order to examine their qualifications for a loan? Well, it, it really, it really does depend. Um, it's, uh, only in very, very rare cases would we see someone that's actually ready to make application for a loan. Hmm. Um, I, I would say for someone that's uh, anticipating uh, uh, obtaining a loan um, to ensure that they have their personal financial house in order. Um, and, and that means they should understand what their credit is. Uh, they should have a, a good handle on what their personal expenses are. They should have a really good handle on what their assets are and what they're bringing into this business venture. Um, I, I think for the most part, people need to have an open mind. Mm -hmm. um, they need to be patient and understanding that this is not something that happens fast. <laughs> That's a, that actually leads us right to the next question was like, what, how long between the complete loan application the decision and the release of funds. What does that timeline look like for you? Yeah, well, and that and that is very Depends. depending on the, <laughs> on the particular situation. Uh, for someone that just comes in with a great idea and they want to start a business, obviously that's going to take much much longer. However, for someone that has uh, great great credit, uh, adequate collateral. Uh, an abundance of cash, and they may just need a little bit of money to buy a business that's doing really, really well. Obviously, a project like that is going to take much, much less because there's a lot of hurdles and risks that have to be overcome, a lot less. Mm. And, and I think that timeline stretches out a little bit with transitioning business owners too, if you're waiting on their financials and their, if they're not quite ready for that transition sure. process too, right? Sure, and uh, it depends on the complexity of the project as well. Mm, yeah, it's really different for a small retail shop, you know, than, than, than what a manufacturing operation or something Sure, like and it depends on what the individual is buying. If real estate is involved, Typically, that uh, tends to add to the process because uh, conventional lenders, banks, or, or organizations like ourselves would require appraisals and, and things like that. So um, in this time of COVID, all of these things are taking longer. Hmm. Any benefits uh, for service-disabled veterans, special programs um, in those kind of cases? Um, well, I'm not sure if there, I, I, I'm not aware of any special uh, financing arrangements. Uh, however, um, as, a, as a Marine Corps veteran, uh, veterans and service uh, connected disability, uh, you know, individuals uh, do get my special attention. So. <laughs> well, th we're, we're glad to hear that. I think we probably have time for, for one more question and we have one. Perfect. Excellent. Um, so what is considered a woman-owned business? A woman-owned business is defined as a business that is owned, operated, and controlled by a woman ha or have a, at least a 51% share in the business. But that person, that woman, considered a minority, uh, actually controls the day-to-day -day operations of the business. And the... the state uh, MWBE certification, it can take a little, a long time, right? So that is something that if somebody's interested yeah. in, they should start at the start that as soon as possible. <laughs> For instance, uh, you know, one of the requirements to apply and make certification, uh, application for certification is the business has to be in business for one year. 
Mm-hmm. Um, now, there are lots of folks that are going through the certification process. Uh, New York State is inundated with requests for certification, and they do have some staffing shortages and things like that. We estimate that the, the process, approval, approval process, takes approximately 12 months or possibly more. Great. Thanks for that insight. Um, and uh, what does MWBE stand for? Last question. Minority Women Business Enterprise. Is that what that stands for? Yep. And, and it is a process. It is a, it, it's an arrangement uh, that's uh, enabled by federal and state uh, governments to enable women and minorities to have a fair share in contracts um, that are put out by federal, state, and municipal entities. Steve, what didn't you get to say that you wanted to tell people about the AADC and the work that you do? I Well, one of the things I wanted to make clear is that we work really, really hard to make people's dreams come true. Um, but we do it realistically. We want to ensure that people are ready for success. And when I say folks need patience, that's where I'm coming from. Because oftentimes we see gaps in one's knowledge and abilities. Um, Sometimes those gaps can be met by hiring a qualified individual, um, or it could be just from learning um, from the many resources and and classes that we offer in the SBDC as well. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Peter, you get one last sentence. Anything you need to add? Yes. Uh, I would like to tell everybody that's here that you've heard frequently, that depends, or it's up to you. (laughs) Those are not evasions for facts. Those are the way business is done in the Adirondack region. It is very individual. You're not a number. Uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate working with these folks because of the personal services. Uh, It will depend on you, and you will be taken care of. That's my final comment. Angela, you get one one sentence. What do you got? Services are free and confidential. Use them, right? That's exactly (laughs) what we're here for. And together we will figure out next steps and pull in the resources you need and look at these numbers and help you with the business plan. Connect with Steve, connect with the lenders. We all work together. Just reach out. That's your number one thing to do is connect don't go at this alone because you don't have to. Oh, thank you. Those are great, all great last words. Um, so these are not the only folks that can help you to finance a business. Um, we put together a little video of IDAs, which are industrial development agencies. And sometimes that's sort of a misnomer, right? Like they have uh, loan funds that aren't just for industrial businesses. You know, all businesses, um, most businesses can, can be supported by them. So we have a little video of, of folks throughout the region who are work at these kind of gap lenders in addition to the AEDC uh, that can support you in different regions, specifically if you're looking at a business in them. I'm going to play that now. Full disclosure, I am not a video editor. I tried really hard. So if there's some weird transitions, please don't blame me and and cut me a little bit of slack. Um, So we're just going to play that and then we'll get wrapped up with some closing remarks. One moment. Hi, I'm Christy Wilts. I'm the Director of Economic Development and Tourism for Hamilton County. Uh, Our office also uh, runs the Hamilton County Industrial Development Agency, which I'm the Executive Director of. Uh, We, in that role, issue uh, low interest loans to businesses. Uh, 3% is the average, anywhere from $25,000 to $50,000 between three and five years. Uh, Sometimes we do higher loans than that. 
Uh, normally those loans uh, we give out uh, for equipment, inventory, working capital, um, any kind of real justifiable uh, purpose for your business. Uh, we do not do construction though. Uh, to apply for our loans, you have to have a bank denial. So we're trying to service those who wouldn't necessarily be able to be serviced by a bank. Uh, and we do work with lending partners throughout the region. So there's qu quite a few options for you. Well, a lot of our mom and pop businesses, the owners are aging out and the living wage in Hamilton County is pretty low. So um, our applicants are, are tend to be those who are riskier. Um, those are the kind of the people that we'd like to take a chance on and help out who wouldn't normally be able to be serviced by a banking or financial in question because we, we don't have a lot of new projects. Um, most of our projects involve just keeping the businesses that we have up and running and going. But we did do um, some work where we unfortunately had to uh, foreclose on a ski area and we were able to find folks in the ski industry to go through kind of a three-year process of taking over the mountain and guided them through in small increments until they were able to uh, purchase it, which was pretty neat because our small area, that's a big business that has a lot of jobs. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I am with the Essex County Industrial Development Agency. I'm one of the co-executive directors. Um, I'm the CEO. Um, and um, in New York State, um, industrial development agencies play a role in economic development. So we cover all of Essex County. Um, and we have a, a list of in, um, specific, um, uh, I'll say financial uh, incentives, services that are, um, go with that. Um, but today, um, I know we are talking about potential financing opportunities for the Center for Business and Transition and some of the participants in your um, seminar next week. And so um, the IDA actually administers on behalf of the county um, some economic development revolving loan fund programs. Um, the applications um, and the uh, loan policy and guidelines are right on our website, which is um, www.essexcountyida.com. Um, in there, you'll see that the loan applications look very much like a bank application. Probably the only difference is that we also request um, employment information. If you're an existing business, kind of like what are, the, what are your jobs look like, full-time, part-time, um, and if you are a new or an existing business and creating new jobs, some information on those as well to capture the economic development impact, if you will. Um, these uh, loan programs are what's considered to be gap lending loan programs. And what that means is that um, you are required to uh, apply to a traditional bank first and uh, whatever the bank um, cannot assist you with in the financing um, portion, the IDA and the revolving loan fund can look at that. Um, that is a requirement to have either bank participation or a bank declination letter um, because we are to be non-competitive with bank financing. Um, once we pass that step, um, then um, in working with the applicant, um, we'll you know actually refer them to another partner. You'll find that this is all about us partnering uh, on the North Country um, in the economic development realm. And uh, we usually typically uh, refer any applicants to one of our partners. Um, the Small Business Development Center um, can assist them as well as ADDC and several other organizations um, so that they can help the applicant put the app application together. And uh, then we look at helping them finance it. Um, we can finance working capital, inventory, uh, machinery, equipment, fixtures, furniture. Um, we can finance construction. However, because these are federal funds, that would trigger the federal prevailing wage rate. So um, our lending tends to only finance non-construction uh, projects. Um, we have um, you know, a rural community of approximately 39,000 people. 
and we have a couple of our, uh, uh, several of our communities, there's 18 towns um, in Essex County, and there's a couple who are more populated and economically um, succinct, if you will. Um, and then there's some smaller communities that have less than a thousand people live there. We like assisting um, a small community that maybe can put in a, a deli or maybe access to a gas station, um, some kind of small and pop, mom, mom and pop um, business is just as impactful as working with larger industries and bigger towns. Um, it's about scale and assisting uh, our constituents with access to goods and services um, that um, help raise um, their level of um, quality of life. Good afternoon, whatever time it is. Um, <laughs> please introduce yourself and tell us where you work. I'm Brittany Davis, Executive Director at Lewis County. Great. What does your organization do? We are the Economic Development Organization of Lewis County and also the Industrial Development Agency. Um, so we focus primarily on business development and community development initiatives in Lewis County uh, while promoting Lewis County through our Naturally Lewis brand and really just trying to make Lewis County the best place to live, work, build, business, and play for people that live here and people who are looking to move here. We have a small business revolving loan fund um, that's available to small businesses in Lewis County uh, for new entrepreneurs and even you know someone who's looking to take over an existing business. Uh, these loans range from $5,000 to $25,000. They're very small. Um, and really, we want you to go to a bank or go to a lender and, you know, try with them first. But we definitely um, do take a little bit more risk when looking at projects uh, with this loan fund. Um, um, so we make sure that if there is a business that's coming to us with financing needs, we want to make sure that we're putting together the best financing package um, for them. And a lot of that is working with other regional revolving loan funds around the region. And this might include um, the Development Authority of the North Country. They have multiple loan funds. Some are very general. Some are very sp uh, specific to industry. They have a tourism loan fund, very uh, specific and geared towards tourism-based businesses. They have an ag loan fund, value-added loan fund. Um, we work with North Country Alliance, which has a very large regional loan fund, Adirondack Economic Development Corporation loan funds. Um, so I think that's a, that is an advantage of working with an economic development agency is that we can work with all of these different partners to put together the best financing package uh, for you. Sure. I'm Beth Gillis. I'm the executive director at the Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board. We are the federally designated economic development district for Warren, Washington, Clinton, Essex, and Hamilton counties. And we also do some work in Jefferson, Lewis, and St. Lawrence counties as well. Uh, we have many different programs. We have economic development programs. We work with municipalities on um, infrastructure for economic development projects. We also have a water quality program uh, where we work with lake associations um, and counties on water quality planning and implementation projects through our, our, throughout our counties. And we also have a small business revolving loan fund where we assist small businesses in our counties um, with whatever their needs may be. Yes, so we have a regular revolving loan fund. They are $25,000 to $150,000 loans. They are for businesses that cannot otherwise get conventional bank financing. So one of the requirements of our loan fund is that you come to us with a bank declination letter. And what we're really trying to do is help folks who 
may not otherwise be able to break into small business, um, either at startup or transition, um, be able to do that with our loan fund. Um, we have a revolving loan fund committee that makes the decisions. Kind of the, the process for us um, is to contact our office and we'll help you with the application and getting all the paperwork together. That gets submitted to our loan fund who then um, speaks to the um, either the owners or the, the people who want to take over the business. Um, talk about the loan. Um, we have low interest loans. Um, right now we're at 3.5 to 6%. Um, and so we're just kind of looking to, to help anybody who wants to help small business. Hi, I'm Russ Kenyon from the Franklin County Economic Development. Great. What do you do there, Russ? I'm the Director of Economic Development and I help manage our loan programs and some of our grants. Well, our main loan program does usually up to $250,000 for gap financing. So if you can't find enough financing through a traditional lender, we can help support you with additional financing. Uh, we have pretty competitive rates for that and we have uh, priority-based lending that includes businesses in transition as a, a positive for uh, our loan consideration. We also have uh, a microloan program in development for smaller amounts uh, for businesses that, that need a quick uh, infusion of cash. When I looked at our program a year ago, uh, I felt that we should offer some discounts on our interest rates and some um, considerations for programs like or, uh, priorities like downtown revitalization tourism, unmet needs and services in our community, and uh, businesses in transition. There is a, a due diligence process that we have to do as a lender, and sometimes it, it takes a little longer than we'd like, um, but um, we see this as a great opportunity to help businesses mature as well in their skills as business owners by requiring them to um, develop some financial statement capacities, and we've seen some businesses really grow and uh, be excited to learn those skills to be able to use in their business going forward. Executive Director for the County of Clinton Industrial Development Agency, as well as its affiliated entities, the um, Capital Resource Corporation and the Grant Facilitation Corporation. So um, when someone is considering developing or redeveloping a site in the Clinton County, in Clinton County, actually, um, Typically, we have individuals who are trying to engage in that redevelopment approach us for financial assistance um, in the form of payment in lieu of tax structures, uh, sales and use tax abatements, mortgage recording tax abatements, and occasionally for the issuance of tax-exempt industrial revenue bonds. One thing that we can do with our Grant Facilitation Corporation is that if there is an individual or company who wants to pursue a grant opportunity from the state or federal level for a project, but they are not a qualifying entity to submit that application, they can approach the Grant Facilitation Corporation and ask that we consider submitting the application on their behalf. Uh, so I've worked in Clinton County for Six years now, a little over six years. I've been in this position for about two and a half years now. Uh, one of the reasons that I loved the opportunity to work in Clinton County from day one is a place that is growing and that there are, there are opportunities for the existing uh, businesses and communities to grow uh, in, a, in what I see as a very sustainable way, a way that improves the quality of life and enjoyment for the people that are here and the people that are coming here.
Wow, we got some great questions going on in the chat and some answers are coming right at you. Uh, we do have one-on-one -on -one appointments coming up in five minutes. If you have a one-on-one -on -one appointment, please just, you can just stay. Um, you might be put back in the waiting room and then we'll put you back in. Uh, or if you would like to make one, there are still spots available with business owners for this evening. If there are questions that didn't get answered in the chat uh, and you want an answer, please, please, please don't hesitate to resend them to transitions at adirondack.org. And we will get roundup answers from the experts on the call this evening and make sure that we get back to you with some of those, some of those answers for you. We are also taking any questions that didn't get answered throughout all of the programs and talking about them tomorrow at brunch. Um, so please join us for that. Please sign up for a one-on-one -on -one, uh, for tonight. There's still time. We got people signing up right now. <laughs> and uh, so please, uh, please come on in and we look forward to having you. We cannot thank you enough for being here. And thank you, Angela, Steve, Peter, everybody who, who was in the video talking about uh, their program and about what, what they do here in the North Country to make uh, businesses happen and business transitions happen. Thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you.